Hi, Carl here for Pro TV, and welcome to our video series where we're going a little bit more in depth with each of the cameras in Kinefinity's lineup. And today we're focusing on the Terra 4K. This is the camera that started our relationship with Kinefinity. This is the first one that really piqued our interest. And then they went on to announce the Mavo and the Mavo LF, which are of course fantastic cameras and we've covered those in their own video. But in this lineup that exists now, I guess the Terra 4K would be the entry level option. But calling this entry level just feels really wrong. Nothing about this feels entry level. Yes, it's got a smaller sensor than the other two, but this has still got RAW and ProRes. This has got a modular design. This has got a fantastic sensor inside it. It's got 4K slow motion. Nothing really about this camera feels entry level, and it is a definite serious cinema production tool. So the Terra 4K uses a sub 35 millimeter sensor, and that's Kinefinity's name for it. In reality, it's a bit of a strange sensor size. It's halfway between micro four thirds and super 35 millimeter. Works out about a 1.8 times crop if you're used to working in crop factors. And so smaller than super 35, but larger than micro four thirds. If that, you think that sounds a little bit small to you, then you can of course use the Kinney Enhancer to get a wider field of view, let in a bit more light and a sharper image. In fact, the Kinney Enhancer is a very, very popular accessory for the Terra 4K with our customers. And so it's definitely one to look at if you're interested in the Terra 4K. But I wouldn't be put off by that sensor size at all. It's not actually that much smaller than Super 35 millimeter. And it's a really lovely sensor. It's got a very nice dynamic range to it and colors in particular. Skin tones are really lovely on the Terra 4K. And because it's a dual native ISO sensor, it's really great in low light as well. For those of you that don't know what a dual native ISO is, it basically means that rather than having one circuit behind the sensor, which takes a reading from that sensor at one sensitivity, there's two circuits behind the sensor set to different sensitivities. In the Terra 4K's case, the bottom one is ISO 800 and the top one is ISO 3200. And then it will choose which set of circuits to use depending on what ISO you've got the camera set to. Now this helps get a little bit lower noise in low light situations, but it really helps expand the dynamic range and the color accuracy when you're up at higher ISOs and is a large part of why this camera is so good at high ISOs. This really is a camera that you can push and pull the ISO on and shoot in pretty much any environment. So apart from the obvious features that attract people's attention straight away, things like the size, the weight, the modularity, the non-proprietary accessories, the big thing that gets people's attention is the slow-mo because in 4K, using the full sensor, the Terra 4K can go up to 75 frames a second. If you crop that down vertically into a sort of cinemascope aspect ratio where you lose the top and bottom, Kinefinity call it their wide mode, you can get up to 100 frames a second in 4K. Go down to 2K and crop in even further and you can go up to 240 frames a second. So you get some great slow-mo options. And with all of that, no matter what frame rate you choose, you can choose RAW or ProRes. In RAW, it's Cinema DNG, and that's at three to one, five to one, or seven to one compression. So that you can choose how small file sizes you want with that RAW and how manageable you need it to be. Or in ProRes, again, you can choose any style of ProRes all the way up to 422 HQ. So that makes ProRes really easy to work with. I think ProRes is what a lot of our customers are gonna be using because the workflow is just so simple and you really don't sacrifice that much quality going down from the RAW to the ProRes. And so being able to shoot those sorts of frame rates in either ProRes 
or raw in such an easy workflow for people really, really does grab people's attention. As with all of these cameras from Kinefinity, it's very easy to shoot anamorphic modes on the Terra 4K. It gives you resolution options that go down to 4x3, just in the menus normally, and then it lets you apply a de-squeeze to that in camera, so that you don't have to be looking at a squashed anamorphic image on the Kinemon, or on the HDMI port, or on the SDI ports, you can de-squeeze that image in camera. And so shooting anamorphic with a Terra 4K is very high quality and very simple to do. So like I said at the beginning, although this is the entry level option in Kinefinity's lineup, this is by no means an entry level camera. So if you're looking to step up to a full blown cinematic production tool, but the budget can't quite stretch to a Mavo or a Mavo LF, the Terra 4K just offers such versatility and value for money. I mean, you can use this in a stripped down handheld setup like this. You can use it in a full blown production rig for a more narrative style of shoot. It can scale with you both in terms of physical size and ports and capability and accessories, but also in terms of record modes and quality. It can just scale with you wherever you need it to for whatever job you might be asked to do. And that just means that the Terra 4K has such value for money. If you've got any questions at all, please do just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, just get in touch with Pro-V sales team. Their phone number and email is down in the description. And of course, you can just head over to the Pro-V website as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.